Did you know that one of the first things that men and women do when they get caught in sin is they try to hide it. When the consequences of sin start coming a person's way, the first reaction of a human is to hide away. Let me give you an example. Adam and Eve. When they were tempted by the devil, well, let me say this. When Eve was tempted and was deceived by the devil to eat of the fruit and disobey God's will in their life, and Adam voluntarily became independent of God, the first thing that they did when they found out that they were naked was hid. They hid. They hid behind the bushes as if God couldn't see them. But I want you to know this. You would have done the same thing as Adam and Eve. If you were in their position, you would have done the same thing. That's just our human nature. They didn't have a sinful nature and they sinned against God. We have a sinful nature and we are always falling short of the glory of God. But I want you to know this. Today's title is this. Hiding it. Hiding it is not the answer. Hiding it is not the answer. We need to confess it. Lust is a sin that destroys from the inside out. And I want you to understand this. Lust is not just for women or for men or completely originated in sexual immorality. There could be a lust for anything. There's people that lust after food. There's people that lust after money. There's people that lust after power. Lust is an uncontrollable desire to have something no matter what the consequences come. And many people, when they have this lust coming out of their heart, one of the first things they want to do was just what Adam and Eve did. They wanted to start placing blame. You remember God said, who told you that you were naked? Who, who, who let you know this knowledge? What have you done, Adam? He said, oh, but you don't understand, God. It was the woman that you gave me. Okay, Eve, what is it that you have done? But it was the snake. It was the snake. It was the snake's fault. And the devil was just like, <laughs> well, you know me. I'm just doing what I do. I want you to understand this. That today, God wants to speak to your heart. God wants to speak to your soul. God wants to encourage you and God wants to lift you out. One of the biggest battles of a, of a Christian is allowing the Holy Spirit to bring conviction in their heart in responding to conviction. Not hiding the sin away. Not trying to blame it on your neighborhood. Not trying to blame it in the community. Not trying to blame it on your spouse. Not trying to blame it on somebody else. But taking responsibility to say, it's me. It's me. It's my fault. I'm the one walking in error. I'm the one missing the mark. It's not no one else's fault, God. It's my fault, and I am responsible for it. Lord, forgive me. And that's what today's video we're going to talk about. We're going to talk about a man in particular who hid sin and the consequences that happened to not only him, but it caused a humongous consequence for his family and for his children. We're going to talk about it in, in Joshua. But I want to talk to you about a scripture, the brother of Jesus. And in James chapter 1 verses 14 to 16, because many people want to blame God for their problems. It says that a foolish person, it says that they, they mess their life up. They get caught up in sin. They mess their, their whole future up. And then they fist, they fist bump to God and say, it's all your fault, God. And it says that they rail at God. Many people today that are lost in sin, they're lost in a, a habitual sin, they're lost in intrusive thoughts, they're lost in sexual morality, or lust after food, or lust after money, or lust after power, or selfish gain. It doesn't matter what the lust is. All that matters is that the lust is coming from a source. And that's what we want to talk about. James pinpoints it in 1 James chapter 1, verse 14 and 16. Look what the Word of God says. But each person is tempted when he is lured and enticed by his own desire. Now, one of the things that I grew up doing in, in Michigan was fishing. And one of the things my dad said, man, you got to learn how to fish with live bait. Because live bait is something that you can you can lure the fish away with the with the smell, with the look of the bait still being alive and wiggling on the on the on the hook. And you just gotta hide the hook so that when you lure the fish, they don't see until it's too late. And the hook catches them and then they're getting hooked and brought in board. And that's what the devil wants to do. The devil wants to bring temptation. Now, temptation is not a sin. Temptation is not bad. Temptation is only an invitation to commit sin. 
It's only the invitation to commit sin. And so look what James is saying. He said, but each person is tempted when he is Lord and enticed by his own desire. Not by the devil's desire, not by, not by your spouse's desire, not by the neighborhood, not by the community, not by the culture, not by the advertisements on the billboards, not by the Instagram photos or the Facebook photos or the, or the old, old uh, dead skeletons coming out of the closet on Instagram or Facebook. No, 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 he's not talking about that. He said, by your own desires that come from your own heart, look what James is doing. But he's going somewhere. He's going somewhere. Pay attention. Look what he says. Then desire, when it has conceived, gives birth to sin when in sin when it is fully grown brings forth death so he said it's it's like it's like a it's like a, a childbirth it says that when a person's heart begins to desire things that are not right that are against God and that's something natural is King David said hey I was I came out of my mother's womb a sinner I came out sinning against God he said look man there's no way here on earth that anybody can be sinless there was only one man that walked the earth that was sinless and his name is none other than Jesus Christ and so yes we're gonna struggle with sin we're gonna battle with sin but that doesn't mean we have to answer that don't mean we have to be a slave that doesn't mean we have to grab that hook no God is trying to teach us we not to do that but he wants us to know the source because if you don't know the source then you're going to always be trying to point your finger in the wrong direction oh it's that person's fault or it's because of this or it's because of that and those are none of the reasons that's never going to help you that's not going to bring healing in your life that's not going to bring restoration in your life that's not going to help change the situation that you want change and i know if you're watching this video right now i know this to be true that you are a fighter that you're a warrior that you are a son and a daughter of god and that you want to change and so this video is only going to help you come up out of that in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. So the source, where does it come from? Our own desires. And if we meditate on it and we let that, if we let that, uh, that sin begin to meditate and begin to flow through our minds and begin to think about it and begin to dream about it and begin to begin to have these little fantasies about it. Guess what? It's going to bring conception in that conception. What it's going to do is going to look for an outsource a way that it can put those dreams and fantasies into an action and when that action comes it has wages it has a price tag attached to it and it's called death one let me tell you there's three there's three different deaths the first one is a spiritual death a spiritual death that means a separation from god because of sin in isaiah he said it the biggest one of the biggest prophets one of the main prophets in the old testament he said the only thing that separates us from the love of god is our iniquities our iniquities have separated from god so when we're constantly practicing sin you know what it does it gets in the way of our relationship with god and it causes a spiritual death that can also lead to a physical death and then if we don't repent, that can also lead to an eternal death, which is complete separation for eternity from our God. God doesn't want that. And if you're watching this video, that's not you. But let's, let's pay attention so we can find out how we can have victory in the areas in our heart, in the areas in our mind that we might be struggling with right now. So pay attention. Romans chapter 6 verse 23 says, sin is not free. It has a price tag attached to it. It says, for the wages of sin is death but the gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord hey there's a price tag attached you know what who paid the price tag for us Jesus you know what he paid for all of our sins from when to when from A to Z that's called atonement that's called propitiation he's paid our debt in full it's paid for so what do we have to do all we have to do is ask God to forgive us all we have to do is not blame other people, confess our sin, and not try to hide it, not try to keep it hidden, not try to act like that's not you, that that's not your struggle, that's not your battle. No, it is your struggle. That is your battle. And that's where you want God to give you the victory. And that's where I learned to have victory in Jesus Christ by just being humble and saying, Lord, you know what? That is me. It ain't no one else's fault, God. I'm not going to hide this. I'm not going to try to act like it's not a battle or a problem I have. No, God, I want you to know, Lord, I need your help in this area. Now, let's talk about the crime that was committed it was joshua joshua had just come out of uh, the the desert he had brought all of god's people from the desert well i should say from 20 on below into the promised land which god had promised him now joshua is the general moses has died he's went up to heaven now 
It is Joshua who's the general. He's a shot caller. He's running things. God says, look, I want to put a show on and tell every nation around who I am. So we're going to go destroy Jericho. Now, when you go into Jericho, I want you to know this. There's one thing I'm telling you to do. I want you guys to not touch anything. No gold, no silver, no, no platinum, no clothes, no silk, no ribbons. I want everything dedicated to the Lord. Now, obey this. And I'm going to give you the victory in the city. That was the order. Joshua related the order to all the generals. The generals related to all the, all the army. And so that was the order. Now, when they go into Jericho, the walls came down after praise and worship. You know how God did it. He said, y'all don't have to move a finger. All I want you to do is praise me. I want you to worship me. And the walls of Jericho collapsed. What was a problem became a stepping stone for their victory. I want you to know this today, that you might see a lust problem in your life as a problem. You might see an addiction to pornography as a problem. You might see a lust addiction to shopping, to eating, or to any other type of disorder of the flesh. You might see it as a problem, but I want you to know, to God, that's not a problem. That's what's going to be those walls, those walls of Jericho, those problems in your life. They're going to come tumbling down one day, and it's going to be a stepping stone for you to walk into victory. And that's what the Lord says. Now, look what happens. There was a man. He didn't obey, and his name was Achan. And look what it says in Joshua chapter 7 verses 20 through 26. Follow me. Pay attention. I know you already got things to do, but this is going to be important. It's very important to your spiritual growth and it's going to help you to grow. Check this out. Achan replied, it is true. I have sinned against the Lord, the God of Israel. This is what I have done. When I saw in the plunder of beautiful robe from Babylonia, 200 shekels of silver in a bar of gold weighing 50 shekels, I coveted them and I took them. They are hidden in the ground inside my tent with the silver underneath. So Joshua sent messengers and they ran into the tent and there it was hidden in his tent with the silver underneath. They took the things from the tent, brought them to Joshua and all the Israelites and spread them out before the Lord. Then Joshua, together with all Israel, took Achan, son of Zerah, the silver, the robe, the gold bars, his sons, his daughters, his cattle, his donkeys, his sheep, his tent, and all that he had to the valley of Achor. Joshua said, why have you brought this trouble on us? The Lord will bring trouble on you today. Then all Israel stoned him, and after they had stoned the rest, they burned them over Achan. They heaped up a large pile of rocks, which remains to this day. Then the Lord turned from his fierce anger. Therefore, that place has been spotted. Can I tell you something? This man honestly thought that that was going to be a blessing for his family. I believe in his mind. He was like, you know what? I'm going to grab it and this is going to be a blessing to my family, my wife and my children. But he was wrong. That's why it says in Proverbs chapter 3 verse 5, hey, never lean on your own understanding, but to just trust in the Lord with all your heart. And it says, and acknowledge him and he will direct your path. God did not want to take anything from, from, from Achan and his family. No, God, on the other hand, was giving them the victory and he was going to bless them. But it's all in the timing of God. I want you to understand this. When a person hides the sin in their heart, hides the sin in their mind and makes excuses of why they can't change. You know what begins to happen? Not only do they become a, a problem in their own relationship with God, but those problems in life, those prices, those wages of sin, you know what they do? They start creating small little tornadoes all around in their families, in their children, in their finances, in their mental peace, in their physical health. That sin that a person hides becomes a big problem in a stink that begins to destroy everything in that person's life. I want to ask you a question today. Is there something in your life today that you have been hiding from God? Is there something in your life, an issue, a lust problem that you have been trying to uh, deal with in your own strength? Sometimes you got you to gotta have some help. Sometimes you might have to go up to a pastor that you love so much, that you respect, a leader in the church, a family member, a spouse, and say, look, man, look, this is too much for me. I'm struggling with this and I see that the consequences are going to cost me more than I'm willing to pay. So I'd rather, I'd rather suffer these consequences of, uh, of facing the shame and the guilt. And let me tell you something. Shame is good. Shame is good. Feeling shame is good. 
That, 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 that brings a good repentance in a person's heart when they feel the shame of their sin, when they feel the, the guilt of their sin, when they feel like, man, you know what? I shouldn't have been done this. I shouldn't have been doing this. I shouldn't have been practicing this. Look, everybody know. No, shame is good. It will bring a true brokenness and repentance in a person's heart. But hiding the sin is going to destroy everything. It's going to take everything. It's going to mess up everything in your life. It's already costing you too much. What is God telling you to do? Hey, don't be like Achan. Don't try to hide the sin. Don't try to cover it up. Don't try to cover it up. No. Hey, expose it. The devil does not want you to bring that to the light. The devil does not want you to expose it. The devil does not want you to confess that this is a struggle, that this is a battle, that this is something that you're struggling. No, he wants you to be quiet, try to fight it on your own. Because people are going to talk mess about you. People are going to look down on you. People are going to be ashamed of you. They're going to talk bad about you. They're going to gossip about you. You're going to be the talk of the town. Hey, just be quiet. Don't say anything. Hey, that is a lie from the devil. That's a lie from the devil. Don't ever be like that. No, humble yourself. Say, look, this is something that I want to have help with. I want you to help me out. I want to be accountable. I want, I want somebody to help me in this area of my life. And when you're like that, when you confess that, when you come bl blamingly in front of the Lord and say, Lord, this is my sin. This is my struggle. This is my battle, God. Lord, I need your help. You know what? God promises. God promises to restore you. I want to show you. Look what it says. This is one of my favorite scriptures. And I hope you put this one in the bottom of your heart. Write it on the tablet of your heart. This is in, in, uh, in 2 Chronicles chapter 7, verse 14. Look what it says. If my people who are called by my name, I want you to know this. You are a child of God. And Jesus is not ashamed of you. He's not ashamed to call you a brother or a sister. He's not, a call, he's not ashamed to call you a son. He's not, a, he's not ashamed to call you. You're his special treasure. You're the apple of his eye. God is not ashamed of you. God is not afraid of your sin. God does not want to judge you. God does not want to, God does not want to deal out a, a judgment and send you to hell. That is a lie from the devil. God wants to forgive you. God wants to restore you. God wants to build you back up. I want you to know this. Just look what it says. If my people who are called by my name humble themselves, that's the key, humbleness, humbling yourself before God, humbling yourself under the word of God, being, being humble before the Lord, and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways. That's what repentance is. Repentance is I was doing this. I, I was in this lust take control of my life. I was watching things I shouldn't watch. I was listening to things I shouldn't look. I was going places I shouldn't go. I was doing things I shouldn't do. But you know what? I repent. I turn away from that wickedness. I'm no longer going to go those places. I'm no longer going to look at those things. I'm no longer going to listen to those things. I'm no longer going to speak about those things. No, God. I repent. It says turn from the wicked ways that I will hear from heaven and will forgive their sin and heal their land. The minute we stop trying to hide and we begin to confess our sin and tell God that you're guilty, that you're the one that's fought. It's not anybody else's fault. It's not God's fault. It's not your family's fault. It's not your neighborhood. It's not your old high school friends. It's not the culture. It is your responsibility to confess that sin and say, God, I need your healing. And the minute you humble yourself, let me tell you something. God will forgive you. God will restore you and God will lift you up. I hope this video has been a blessing to you. And if it has and you would like to come clean before the Lord today, I want you to repeat this prayer with me. Say, Father, in the name of Jesus, Lord, today, Lord, I'm, I'm done hiding my sin, God. I confess that I am a sinner and I have been sinning against you and you alone. And I ask you, Lord, to forgive me, to wash me. And to cleanse me. I believe that Jesus died on the cross for my sins. And today I repent of my sins. I turn away from my wicked ways. I want you to heal me, Lord. I want you to restore me, God. And I want you to lift me back up for your honor, your glory, and your praise. In Jesus' name, amen. I hope this video has been a blessing to you. I hope it's encouraged you. And if it has, this video, this channel is being a blessing to your life. I and you want to be an amazing blessing to my video, an amazing blessing to my channel, there's two different ways that you can be a blessing. The first one looks a little bit like this. It's a super thanks. Now, a super thanks, it doesn't matter the amount, but let me tell you something. Whatever you give, it's a great blessing and is greatly appreciated. The second way that you can show your appreciation for this channel or for this video, it looks something like this. It's called channel membership. Now, my channel membership has two different tiers. The first tier is $9.99. The second one is $19.99. Now, both of these channels have certain colors and badges. Then you have also access to certain lives that I do, shorts, 
in long content videos that everybody else in the public does not have access to. And I want you to know this. It is a great financial blessing every single month, not only for my life, but it's also for my family. Thank you so much. I want you to do me a humongous favor. If you've been watching this far, if you've been a part of my YouTube channel, man, I want to thank you so much for everything that you're doing because you're the one that's helping build this channel up. If you're not a subscriber, go ahead, press that button, subscribe to my channel. Make sure you hit that bell and turn on all notifications so every time I drop a video, which is about three to four times a week, that you'll be one of the first ones encouraged by God's word. And also, before you leave, I want you to do me a humongous favor. Make sure that you like this video because it pushes the YouTube algorithm so other people can be encouraged. Make sure that you share it. Make sure you leave a comment. Tell me something that you would like to see, a video that you would like me to do, and how this might have encouraged your life. And also, before you leave, check out some of these other videos. They're going to be an amazing blessing to you also. God bless you. Until next time, I love you so much.